So the mechanics of the network. Uh, here, uh, we are going to do that. Here, in general, uh, you uh, will like to share the data between, uh, so here, test and train. Yes, train, this one, and the test, which is a validation. Uh, we are going to use validation instead of test. So the, the difference in the test is just for you, uh, just for you to take a look. Uh, uh, we are going to use, but I think I'm going to leave it for you as, as an exercise, to plot a similar graph like this one, in which you're going to show the data plus the prediction uh, for you to see, you know, but I'm going to leave it as an exercise. I have created the code for you. I'm going to leave you to ask you to try, but I'm going to leave you uh, the code I'm not, as, a, as, a, as a response. So in a specific case, we are using uh, validation versus training. Training is the one that go to the model. Validation is the one that you use for the for the model uh, to make sure that it's learning. So uh, both both the validation, the training, they 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 modify the neural model. But the test data set, which sometimes you like to use, does not modify. So if you make a mistake during the test, that mistake doesn't change anything. So the, uh, I'm going to explain you guys how I even include for you a video based on a tweet that I saw on Twitter, how to have some ideas, some principles to, to interpret the, the validation curve versus the training curve during the training process. So I just have to take a look at the section, the specific section. So neural mode, learn for an example, as most AI models somehow, the most common practice separate the data set into training and testing and validation. We are going to use, uh, in our specific case, I'm going to use training, validation, and I'm going to leave you exercise to make a kind of testing, but using the, the, you plot the data. There's a trick to make sure you where to learn the rule, not to memorize. So the big point at Fisher to work is that you should never memorize your data set. That's a very important, it's called overfitting. Uh, overfitting is when you train your model too much on a data set, but they do not learn the rule. They learn the data, which is a very bad thing because whenever you try, when you try to use your model, it's going to have a problem. So uh, think like this. On college, you are given several samples to learn, but when I'm out, we appear on examination. The one you used to learn are the training data sets. So the time you spend with your professor making exercise, learning, that's the training part. Where I used to, whereas the professor is going to separate a couple of, of questions for you to put in your examination. Some professors like to repeat the question in the examination, but the important thing to keep in mind, uh, the time you spend your professor in the classroom, the training process, the part that you spend doing the examination of the questions is your validation. So the validation is your examination. The training is the time you pass, you stay in classroom learning with your professor, making an exercise, uh, the list of exercises that you're going to pass you, that's the training process. So, if you wisely use it, you're supposed to teach you the inner concept. You know that, you know, sadly, our teaching, our teaching system is based on memorization. But at, at least as we show in your work, they are very concerned that you should not memorize. Sadly, on our learning process, on our learning system, the professor usually they are not very concerned about memorization. They want you to memorize. But uh, on a training, on, on, on machine learning, on machine learning, it will take seriously the, uh, that your machine is not going to memorize. This, this is the whole idea behind uh, segmented data set. Teach the model the inner truth, not the noisy and flurky and the, all the stuff that go there. Uh, in a specific case, uh, uh, as I said, as, 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 as I'm going to see, the challenge is how to estimate the perceived temperature in function of the of the measured one because the perceived temperature is is a function of several factors if the weather is closed if it's like a lot of wind if you have humidity on the air all of this is going to affect the uh, the, the perceived temperature so our challenge is how to eliminate this our challenge is how to learn this inner truth and to eliminate all the noise the noise comes from the the, the weather was noise if the weather was windy if the weather was humidity, all of this, for us, that's noise. We just wanted to know what the relationship between measured temperature and the perceived temperature. So guys, singles.
thank you a lot. That's the end of this part. So hope you come back in the next section.